a very warm welcome to this special Diwali edition of E Ink. We hope you're all having a wonderful festive season, and we have a very uh, uh, special lineup for you on the show today. We're focusing on the hyper local space. In fact, hyper local commerce has really been growing uh, by uh, leaps and bounds this past year. And our panelists today will also, in fact, uh, elaborate on that and endorse that. Grocery, in particular, accounts for about 70% of India's total retail market of $350 billion, according to the most recent reports. So why is this segment uh, the uh, actual action of the moment? Why is everyone focusing? What's really driving growth and what's the way forward? To discuss that and more, joining us today, we've got Albinder Dinsa from Growfirst. We've got Navneet Singh of Pepper Tap and from Big Basket joining us as well. We have Abhinay Chaudhary. Thank you all so much for being with us on the show today. Albinder, let me start off with you. It's been a fantastic year for Grofers. You've had to really keep up with expansion. You've also had serious funding that's come in and a lot of it has been game changing for the company. Take us through some of the milestones that you've seen. Yeah, so uh, we actually, uh, contrary to belief, we are actually a three-year-old company. And for the first two years, a lot of people did not know what we were doing, but we were in the hyper-local space, uh, delivering for a lot of local merchants. And uh, this year in January, we launched our app. Uh, and now we have over a million downloads on Android and half a million on, on iOS. And uh, we are basically in 26 cities delivering groceries, iPhone chargers, uh, bakery items, flowers to consumers across uh, uh, all the neighborhoods in these cities. And uh, really sort of the highlight for us has been that sort of coming at, uh, coming at a time when e-commerce itself in India has uh, substantially grown as an industry over the last few years uh, is the the uptake of this particular segment the things that people need every day things that earlier used to be a painful trip to the to the local shops or to a big segment of sort of the unorganized and, and fragmented retail uh, how quickly have the consumers taken to actually buying these things online and and I think that shows across the growth that we have shown, the growth that Pepper Tap has shown, and, and what Big Basket has shown. Um, I think it will be a very, very interesting segment over the next year or so. In fact, Abhinay, let me bring you in here because uh, exactly what Albinder was saying, we've seen a lot of growth in this segment. Again, you've been uh, one of the more uh, uh, you know, entrenched players in the space. What are you making of the sudden burst in interest? In fact, if we take a look, I think 25 firms have cumulatively raised uh, over 160 million dollars in just this year itself. Yeah, that's right. So, <clears throat> as you rightly pointed out, uh, this being the really the mother of all the categories, and uh, uh, we started a uh, long time back. We started 2011, and uh, the good thing is that uh, uh, you know with so many players coming in, uh, obviously the market uh, is is growing. Uh, it's expanding because. Uh, People are then uh, getting exposed to all the communication from various brands they are trying out, they are getting exposed to the category and uh, uh, since more and more people are really trying out, it's kind of really increasing the market share uh, of, of you know the mind share among, among the consumers in terms of the grocery buying online. So that's, that's a very good positive uh, uh, you know, uh, change I would say. So when we started off in 2011, uh, uh, it was still a big question mark uh, in terms of uh, grocery online. People were not sure uh, whether Indian consumers who want to touch and feel will they be really buying groceries online. So, but uh, uh, fortunately for us, I think the timing was right, and uh, uh, Bangalore kind of really surprised us when we started. And uh, even after four years of being in the market, we still kind of really innovate chasing demand. I mean, so we have been uh, building our capacity uh, month on month, and that's a good sign for every player who's coming in because there is uh, room for everyone. Right? And uh, consumer segments are obviously kind of very diversified. Some people uh, prefer to shop in a way and certain people are not prefer. So, so you have a mix of customer segments opting for various options available in the market. All right, well, I, I can see everyone's being very nice to each other today and uh, <laughs> and acknowledging that uh, there is a room uh, for uh, growth and, and uh, several players. But things are getting interesting. In fact, uh, Navneet, coming it's to a, you. It's, it's a Diwali special. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> Absolutely. All in good, good festive spirit. Navneet, coming to you. 
you know, you've actually seen funding and backing by a player who's looking for a presence in the space. How does that also change things for you? Uh, you know, you were also trying to, of course, make your mark in this crowded space and getting in a snap deal. How has that changed things on ground? Um, for us, nothing really changes. Uh, obviously, all of these horizontal pairs, Flipkart, Snapdeal, Paytm and all, they all, everybody knows that grocery in itself is a fairly big category and everybody really wants some part of the play here. So the investment from Snapdeal basically comes more as a financial investment uh, for us. It basically leaves us completely independent to do what we have been doing. Uh, basically, we want to be the sort of go-to grocery company in India for customers. And having launched in December uh, last year, it's been just about 10 months for us. Uh, grown to about a million odd customers today, 25 odd cities uh, presence. But going forward, I mean, uh, right now the focus is basically expanding our base and uh, getting the customer experience right. Grocery in itself is not really a, uh, a very easy category to crack. And that's been proven by a lot of startups which basically came in over the last five years and quite a few of them have actually died down. But uh, I think now, as Albinder said earlier, and uh, I also said, this is probably the right time to get in. Uh, people are actually used to buying online different things. And grocery is just the next logical step uh, in the sense you have a smartphone in your hand. You, basically, it's very convenient for you to sort of uh, buy things on your smartphone. Nobody really looks forward to going to a grocery store over the weekend and, you know, spending two hours there. I don't. So, um, I mean, that's definitely the right time for us. All right, uh, let's take a very quick break. We've got a lot to discuss uh, with our three panelists. In fact, we're going to get a debate going on uh, which business model actually works better. We've seen a burst in growth and funding, but which one's actually going to succeed going ahead? And will the omni-channel way really uh, be what works best? We're going to get some uh, views from our panelists when we come back in just a minute. Welcome back. You're with us here on this uh, very special edition of E Inc. Uh, we hope you're all having a wonderful festive season. Joining us today on the show, we've got Alvinder Dinsa from Grofers, Namit Singh from PepperTap, and Abhinay Chaudhary of Big Basket to discuss some of the trends in the space. Alvinder, you know, PepperTap, for instance, uh, focuses very heavily and specifically on groceries, whereas a Grofers uh, is broadening uh, the space to also other basic needs that a consumer may have. What is the advantage that you see in that? So actually, uh, our whole premise when we started, uh, it was more to do with that, look, we want to take out that painful trip to the local market, uh, and which uh, I had, I have to make, and I'm sure you have to make, that you know the light bulb goes out and you sort of have to go to the market, or a lot of the sort of little things that, that right now you're dependent on the local market for. Uh, and what we've been sort of seeing over the last few years, and uh, that in the offline retail channel, that as a sort of fragmented channel is not really expanding. Uh, and we are sort of stuck in the same supply chain that we have been for the last 30, 40 years. So our whole premise was that we want to take that trip out. Right? I as a consumer would love it if, if basically anything that I'd right now purchase from the local market, I could just do it online and not actually have to make the trip. Not to mention that a lot of this actually comes driven by the merchants. Right. So when the merchants see that you know, the shop next to them is actually able to sell successfully online and is seeing incremental business. I think they will also sort of want to come onto a platform sooner rather than later. All right, I, I'm going to come back to you, Navneet, on that as well. But I mean, I, just to come to you here, because you've actually uh, focused on the back end logistics, you've got your own warehousing, etc. How does that work for you? That's something that which, for instance, uh, a Pepper Tap is not doing, and I'm going to go across to Navneet uh, on that as well. Uh, but how does that work for you? I mean, doesn't it actually increase costs and increase uh, the pressure or responsibility of inventory, or does it actually make things easier? So, uh, as uh, it was pointed out earlier, this category is really a, a very uh, difficult category and uh, <clears throat> inventory-led approach really helps us uh, give a great uh, customer experience and uh, uh, also from a unit economics perspective, it really gives us enough margins in the business to be able to, uh, you know, make money on, on every transaction. So just to uh, share with you uh, the real uh, real world consumer experience, you know, wherein uh, you walk into a store with a list of you know ten items, and then most likely you will just walk out with maybe seven or eight items because the guy uh, you know is stocked out on, on a lot of these items. Now, so if you just really put it uh, across on a in an online scenario, having your own inventory, having a control on that, 
right? And being able to kind of show the live inventory to the consumer so that you can give almost 100% of his order value is really a, a, a great experience uh, with consumer wants. Because uh, <clears throat> without that, you know, you are really not really taking the pain out. So, so right from the beginning, we have been pretty focused on this, and it's just not that we are saying that you know we will deliver your complete order. We have a guarantee to support it. You know, as a business, saying that if we don't fulfill your entire order, whatever we don't deliver, we give you 50% value of that item as a penalty on us. So we also have a delivery guarantee for our customer. If we don't deliver in the slot what we have uh, you have chosen, we'll give you 10% of the order value back to you without you asking for it. So I think these are two uh, very basic building blocks in this category uh, and that's the reason we have been pretty focused from day one on these two guarantees for our customers and that is really kind of driving a lot of uh, customer demand for us. Fair enough. So each model, of course, they're having its pros and cons, as you just said. Up and I, Navneet, let me bring you in here and, and get a different picture from you, and uh, understand, uh, you know, what really works uh, when it comes to Pepper Tap and that particular model. Sure. Um, as Abhinay said, inventory-led uh, model definitely has a little better control on the inventory. Mm. Uh, so I don't understand why you would need to have a policy where uh, some of the items that you don't deliver, basically you return 50% of the value. Mm. I mean, that uh, situation should never come up if you are an inventory-led model. Mm. But in any case, in a hyperlocal uh, model, it's obviously much more difficult to know exactly what's there in the particular store uh, or not. So uh, rather than just looking and working at the front end part, wherein we basically pick it up from the store and deliver to the customer, we're also working with these uh, stores that we work with. For example, right now we work with about 250 odd stores. So aggregating them, uh, working at the back end logistics, so trying to uh, connect them directly to the brands rather than sort of uh, getting them through a middle level kind of distributor where their fill rates are themselves are not very high. So working on that, helping those guys actually uh, procure these items more frequently in a higher quantity so that the stock outs don't happen. But for all this, what you need is basically scale. So uh, yes, inventory-led model would give you uh, slightly higher margins earlier, but as you build scale, the same margins actually can be had in a hyperlocal model, which is what we are after. And now with these 25,000 odd orders that we do every day, uh, we have that scale and we are able to sort of at least influence uh, the back-end logistics, the back-end supply chain for these stores in a way which uh, uh, makes, makes a particular store actually much more favorable to a hyperlocal logistics model. So it works for us. Okay, I'm actually going to uh, get Ab Abhinay to uh, respond to that as well and also bring Alvinder back into this debate. But I, we need to take a very quick break. We'll be back. Uh, do stay tuned on this very special edition of e -Ink. Welcome back. You're with us here on this special uh, edition uh, on Diwali, on E-Ink, we uh, hope you're all having a wonderful uh, festive season. And we're in conversation with three of the uh, major players from the hyperlocal commerce space uh, discussing the trends uh, in the year gone by and also what to look forward to going ahead. Uh, we're with uh, Alvinder Dhinsa of Grofers, Navneet Singh of Pepper Tap, and also Abhinay Chaudhary of Big Basket. Alvinder, let me come to you on uh, the debate we were having just before we went into the break. What do you feel works better? Because I know Grofers, while at the moment doesn't have its own inventory, has been open to thinking about it. How would you weigh up both sides of uh, that debate? Right, so our, our actually motivation of thinking a little bit deeply about the supply chain was once we had enough consumers coming onto the platform, um, a couple of um, issues we realized is uh, something that were mentioned, like for example, fulfillment of orders from local stores, completeness of the orders. These are ongoing challenges primarily because the underlying supply chain that, that feeds into the local stores right now is actually fairly weak. So we were coming at it sort of after we built uh, some base that, you know, what, when, what can we actually do to make this supply chain better? Uh, how do we get enough merchants on our platform to uh, start thinking of online as a useful enough medium for them that they would invest in improving the supply chain? Uh, what tools can provide them to give them better visibility into you know what is what are the items that they need to order quickly uh, and if <coughs> at all we can intervene uh, 
actually using our tech platform right. uh, between the merchant and the brand and the merchant and let's say the farmer, uh, can we intervene and actually uh, add value in how they are stocked up, how smartly they are stocking up. I think the eventual uh, outcome of everything that we are doing and, and Big Basket is doing and Pepper Tap is doing is that uh, some sort of a hybrid model will emerge and of course a lot will be driven by you know who has the consumers, who has the power to be able to execute this effectively uh, because they have so many orders coming into their platform. Absolutely. The need of the hour, will it be an omni-channel player? This is an area in which traditional conglomerates have actually struggled to find a foothold in. Uh, so will actually uh, uh, the synergies between some of these new modes and technology coming to the forefront change the game for the space? Uh, and I want to give you a chance to respond to some of those comments as well and also get a sense from you on the way forward. Customer acquisition, as you mentioned, continues to be a challenge for everyone uh, and uh, maintaining our loyalty and building on that. How do you see things or how do you see growth are really shaping up going ahead? Yeah, so uh, just to quickly uh, comment on uh, Navneet's uh, point on uh, the, you know, why do we need to give a full order guarantee? Uh, even though we have uh, inventory stock with us, uh, right, and it's live, still there are cases wherein, you know, one odd item might might be kind of uh, uh, damaged in transit at the time of receiving all that. So even though you run at 99.99% fill rate, but that one one-off case wherein you know you are not able to deliver is wherein that's the compensation to the customer. So that's the level of uh, confidence the customer has when they order with us so that they will receive the entire order. So uh, coming back to the uh, margins aspect of it again, uh, going back to the scale uh, point which Navid made. Uh, given that we are in a in a country wherein you have most of the FMCG products having an MRP, right? And the margins really, irrespective of whatever scale you kind of take it to, have not gone beyond I would say 25%. Uh, so let's say if you take a national player having direct sourcing uh, inventory, uh, right, and having a lot of private labels. Uh, there's a ceiling to the margins over there, right? So you cannot really go. So somebody who is pan India, very high scale, backs you will go is 25%, that's where we will also go. Uh, but fortunately for us, since we also take care of the whole lot of private labels, right, which is really a key differentiator from our perspective when it comes to the fruits and vegetables, when it comes to the staples, right? So that those are the really high margin categories which you can drive uh, uh, as, as a store brand. Uh, until unless you have a substantial share of that in your overall revenues, your, your margins are really going to struggle. So uh, from that perspective, I would say even if you scale and if you don't have inventory, don't source directly and don't have these private labels, you cannot go beyond, I would say, you know, max 18% is, is what uh, the, the kind of the store makes. And if you're working with the store, right, like a, like a small chain, uh, he would not be able to sh partake, you know, anything more than 10-12% with you. So your margins really kind of is uh, are very limited, and make making a, 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 a you know a, a break-even case out of that is, is very very difficult. So that's that's the margin uh, play over there, right? Now, customer experience and unit economics is what really our focus is, and uh, and and. We are not really going to get into any additional uh, categories. We are pretty focused that grossly that itself is a huge play. We will continue to focus on that. Uh, what all we will cater to around that category is uh, primarily around kitchen, uh, primarily around whatever customers buy, uh, you know, often, right? And in terms of the future growth, uh, we were kind of a bit slow initially, uh, but then now what we foresee is is a very fast-paced growth. Uh, uh, we are. Uh, we are launching uh, additional cities, uh, we are going to tier 2 towns, we are launching our express delivery and, and just to comment on Harminder's point, so we are not really kind of ever going to move away from the inventory so we will continue to focus on what our strengths are and we will continue to do that and, and just to kind of clarify, we are actually not a hyper local player, we are an inventory led grocery online retailer so that's our definition. Uh, uh, we, we are looking at a 400 million uh, dollar run rate uh, as an exit rate in March uh, which is which is uh, kind of pretty steep growth in what we have seen uh, as our, our online uh, overall uh, turnover last year. All right, <laughs> that's uh, a lot on uh, this Big Basket's uh, agenda. Uh, Navneet, uh, let me come to you and let you also elaborate a little bit more, add to uh, uh, what some of your plans are going forward. Sure. Um, in my opinion, what Abhinay has just outlined uh, is basically more of a traditional way of thinking about groceries. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are trying to think about this very differently. We are thinking this is not just uh, 
just a margin play. Yes, in the end you have to make money, but it is more about solving the technology and the supply chain problems that the stores have. Uh, we want to be able to get the economies of scale that an inventory-led player can have, uh, but you want to do that building scale through technology and actually solving the supply chain problems as Alvinda pointed out earlier. Um, how we're going to do that is obviously uh, yet to be seen in the next couple of years or so as we build scale and start sort of plugging different pieces of the uh, puzzle. Uh, we'll see how we sort of get there. Uh, Inventory-led players, yes, uh, as I, mean, I said, have higher margins, but they also get uh, uh, sort of trade-offs in terms of wastage losses and fixed running costs and stuff, which we don't have. So it's a trade-off between the two models, and as Albinda said, I think in the long term what's going to happen is it's going to be more of a hybrid uh, for both these models. Um, the inventory-led player will probably do things like express deliveries through distributed fulfillment centers, whether they are owned by them or somebody else, doesn't really matter. Um, and people like us may also dabble in some inventory at some point of time. Uh, so we'll see how it sort of plays out. Only time will tell. <laughs> Fair enough. Alvindra, I'm going to let you have the last word today after a, a lot of uh, uh, debate on uh, various models, what works, what doesn't. As you mentioned, uh, it looks like the industry is set for some interesting times and some, uh, you know, synergies perhaps in, in, in different models and ways of looking at things or, or also perhaps some consolidation going ahead. What's uh, up next for growers? What should we look forward to as we uh, wind down this conversation this Diwali? See, I think uh, at this point we are in the stage in the market where almost all of us should, uh, we all know that there is validation of the fact that consumers want quicker delivery, consumers want faster delivery, they want higher assortment, they want to buy a lot of things, as evidenced by the fact that, as Nudin had earlier pointed out, the, the big e-commerce, the horizontal e-commerce, has also shown an intent uh, to, to get in this place. Flipkart has also launched something which is uh, which caters to uh, one and a one and a half hour delivery. Uh, so I think there is a there is a very strong validation around uh, the fact that this is this is generally the direction that almost everybody will will go towards. Uh, and I think that's going to drive a lot of things that we do as well because uh, now we are sort of you know the, the test case for a lot of these categories. Alvinda, uh, I just want to jump in there and ask you whether or not that sure. puts pressure on uh, players like yourself in terms of the pace of growth as well. So I uh, I think it definitely does put pressure, mm. uh, but uh, then there are also like, you know, it is a trade-off. Like we also know that this is a difficult category to build in. This is something that, uh, that people don't really understand that well. Uh, I mean, even a year and a half ago, there was not as much acceptance of this concept as there is now. Uh, and I think people who start started with it will always have that advantage because they sort of learned what it was all about. I think the bigger the bigger question is going to be like you know uh, I think what what has sort to some extent been a problem for e-commerce is that you know the perception of discounting and and sort of heavy uh, sort of a heavy bloodbath that's going on in the segment itself uh, is that going to also come into this segment. Uh, if all the bigger players also decide to enter. I think that will put a lot of pressure not just to grow, but to also sort of, you know, be able to to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe on a lot of the products, along brand partnerships, all that mm -hmm. stuff, because I think the bigger players can definitely make the place a lot more muddier in the short term. However, I think this is, uh, and I think everybody over here has agreed that these are plays that are built more around operations, around the supply chain, around the tech and, and how you're going to make yeah. sure that the consumer has a great experience. Uh, so I think eventually that is what you win on uh, and that's what we certainly hope we will win on but uh, that is what you win on and, and everything else is going to be more of a transient phase. I don't think the bigger guys are going to have sort of a single-minded focus to just figure out the hyper-local problem. Absolutely. Well, on that note, I'm going to have to close this conversation. It was fantastic uh, getting to chat with all three of you together and understanding some of the uh, challenges in the space and how you're all uh, going about them uh, in, in your own ways and, and really collectively making the entire space much bigger and, of course, uh, giving the customers a lot to choose from. Thank you all so much for joining us uh, on this uh, very special edition of E-Ink. Once again, wishing all our viewers uh, a very happy Diwali. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.